I hope so. Because if not, maybe you should shut your computer off right now. Welcome, everybody, to Inside the Rut MX Podcast. My name is Kenny Watson, and I am your host. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone that made this possible. Team Elite, general contracting, residential or commercial construction, and all of your landscaping needs. They've got it covered. Team Elite has over 30 years of combined experience to get your project done right. Visit EliteTeamOffices.com for more details and tell them Inside the Rut sent you. They will exceed your expectations. Hookapaw Casino and Resort, located just outside of Yuma, Arizona. Headed to the river, Lake Havasu, or to Phoenix from San Diego? Well, it's on your way. Make a pit stop. Headed to Glamis? Make a short detour. Stay and play. For more information, visit their website, CocoPawResort.com. That's C-O-C-O-P-A-H Resort.com. Ron's In Your Ear Audio, located in Havasu City, Arizona, taking care of all of your audio and electronic installation. They do gel coats, alarm installations, and shrink wrap. They also take care of any fiberglass needs. If you're in the area, stop in and see their showroom. Visit ronsinyourearaudio.com and tell them Inside the Rut sent you. They'll take care of you. X-Brand. Searching for goggles? Search no further. Go to xbrand.com. That's E-K-S brand.com and enter in the promo code ITR48 for 30% off. Works Connection for all of your two-wheel needs. Works Connection has the products you need. Go to worksconnection.com. Harton Huntington Tattoo, located in Las Vegas, Orlando, Niagara Falls, and Nashville. If you're in any of these areas, stop in and tell them Inside the Rut sent you. Guts Racing. Guts Incorporated has been providing high-quality, high-performance seat covers and foam since 1990. Visit GutsRacing.com to view their selection and use discount code ITRMX30 for 30% off. For direct links to our sponsors' websites, visit our website, ITRMX.com. Welcome back, everybody. This is the uh, long-awaited podcast I've been waiting to do, and I know everyone's super excited. So uh, let's not wait any longer and uh, introduce my guest, number five, Radical Ryan Dungey. Welcome, yeah. Ryan. Yeah, hey, guy. What's, what's going on? <laughs> Nothing, man. Uh, what's going on with you? How's you, you what, You're you supposed to be retired, dude, and I talked to you, and you're just like running around cr- crazier than ever. Yeah, no, I... I uh can't just shut her down completely um you know last uh, made the made the announcement last week on tuesday and it was good and you know we're out here on the west coast and with the outdoors kind of starting up and everything going i figured you know my flights were kind of booked already and i wanted to go check out the first round hang town and we'll be in Glen helen this weekend as well so cool, it's good cool, you know cool. i uh i can't just shut her down completely you know i <laughs> marvin he's a good teammate of mine and you know we're kind of want to be there for them and help and a good friend and and um you know, I don't do good just sitting around doing nothing. I, I, I do know we need, you know, especially Lindsay, we're going to go take some time and enjoy a little vacation and, and uh, do uh, some thinking. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Do I no, feel it? No, do I feel on. it? Do I feel it coming no. on the Destin trip? We have to reunite it? <laughs> hey, I mean, it, I, I haven't been invited yet, but I, I was hoping it was going to come about, you know. Maybe so. I'll trailer my boat 3,200 miles so uh, you can get your toes wet on the boat that you almost bought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, I'll let we, you. Uh, I'll let you drive it, bud. Don't worry about we, it. <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate. I appreciate that. It was. I was gonna, but then you stole it out from under me. Uh, it's well, right. Someone needed to block past you. All these other guys yeah. are just talking shit. So yeah, we had to step yeah. up. Me and Kyle, and we we took her. But uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you are not the guy just to sit still. I think you get that work ethic from uh, Troy Boy, and uh, you know that guy is unbelievable worker and you know that's just crazy but uh i kind of wanted to go back to the beginning like when i first met you um and it was i don't know if you remember do you remember being on the flight with uh, ivan and i and you were going somewhere i think you weren't even a pro yet and you were going to the race and you asked ivan for his autograph Uh and i was like you you were on that flight yeah i wasn't sitting with him i was sitting like a two rows behind him oh man you wouldn't have yeah, you, w- you wouldn't have known who I was then or who I no you know. I mean yeah, I, 
Yeah. Yeah, but that was that was kind of cool, and uh, I I remember um, the first race you raced for that team. But uh, I want to go back to the beginning. A lot of people speculate like that Roger found you in the amateur ranks, and I don't really think I didn't Big E at Answer have a lot to do with you getting like getting that opportunity with Roger back in the day? Um, you know, it's, it's such a, I mean, it was such a random, uh, how it all came about, you know, I think for sure, like I will say Big E was like a huge supporter. He was that answer at the time. And, you know, with, with mom and dad trying to support three kids going racing on the amateur races, it was, he definitely helped us out and with gear and he was just a good friend. And, I know he was good friends with Roger and, um, you know, it, it, the way it all came about was just like, it, it couldn't ever happen like that. You know, it just was, we were, man, I was looking to go pro. I remember I was 16 years old and we were talking to a satellite team and I was riding for Cole Grass on the amateur Suzuki team. I, I was a B rider, I, you know, like, a yeah. there's the a ride and there's a B ride and I was on the B ride and, and it was good. I was getting support. My little brother, Blake, at the time, though, he was on the, the A team and he was getting, you know, full free bikes. And it were, if it, actually, if it weren't for Blake, I mean, honestly, I would have never have even had an opportunity with, with Suzuki. I kind of was wasn't putting in the results, but they decided to help us. And um, Yeah. Speaking of know. Blake, like um, I remember Blake um, in at Texas at some amateur races and a lot of people don't know, but your brother Blake was quite a, he was a prodigy and he, um, injuries kind of took him down. It seemed like. Yeah. He had a rough couple, a couple of injuries that, um, that was hard. You know, I think it weighed on him mentally, but for sure you, you, you said it. I mean, he had the, the skill, the talent. I mean, he, he, even today he can take, you know, not ride a bike for two years, hop on a bike. And you're just thinking he didn't even miss a beat, you know, maybe the physical side ain't there, but it's just incredible. The stuff you can do on a dirt bike. So <laughs> it's, it's funny. Cool to see. It's funny. You say that dude. Cause I remember uh, one day at the farm and uh, he was in, he was there and he wanted to ride and your dad's all, no, no, you're going to get hurt. He's like, dude, he was coming back <laughs> from something. I think he maybe a back or something. And he was yeah. just like, I got to do it. And he went out there and he was just shredding. So I feel good. And I'm your dad's all, don't even think about it. <laughs> yeah, no, he, no, nah, it was. And, uh, yeah, that's all yeah. good. Yeah. No, I just, it's good. It was, go ahead. Sorry. It was, a family. it was, no, it was a family thing. And I was just thinking how, you know, it just, how everything came about was incredible. You know, we were talking to a satellite team with, I think it was WBR at the time. And then Ooh, good choice. We were, yeah, we were in, um, we were in Vegas, me and my dad were, and, and I remember thinking, all right, this is our last chance. You know, we're either going to ride for this team, which is, which was good. You know, it's a ride, or we're going to ask Roger DeCoster to, for a factory ride. And which is, <laughs> you know, you, you know, I mean, equipment everything. And I, and there I was, you know, I'm, we're going over to Roger at, it was the finals. I think it was the year that Ricky, uh, it, things were close. It was 06. And, um, we just said, Raj, look, we don't want any money. We just, I don't, I'll, I'll ride for free. I just want the equipment to prove myself, you know, I, you know, with the equipment, cause that's, you know, I wanted good equipment, you know, that's where it had to be. And, and, um, and how, I mean, it was incredible. And he calls us the next day. And then four days later, he's like, Hey, meet us at Glen Helen on Thursday. We'll give you a test. We'll see what you got. And so, uh, we show up and, and bear in mind, I mean, Ricky, you know, I, Ricky's there testing and I'm thinking I'm riding with Ricky and they got the track rented out. So I'm a little intimidated and, and with him and Roger, but, uh, geez, the first lap I fell right in the mud. It was like, Oh man, like we had to come in power, wash the bike off. But long story short, it was a good day. Everything went smooth. And uh, it all worked out in the end, didn't it? Yeah, and Roger said, we'll sign a two-year deal for you. And, 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 there, and there we were, you know, 16, and, you know, dreams are happening, and, you know, life's good. So. Yeah, it, it kind of, I mean, from there on, I mean, uh, I know that, that next year, you know, Ivan was your teammate, and Ricky was kind of part-time. And um, yep. and I know you went, did you go to the farm that's in, seven, in 07, or did you still stay in Texas and then went there in 08? Yep. So I did go there to the farm for, it was just a team test. Uh, mm -hmm. it was two weeks. So it was just a 
oh, all of pretty much all of 2008, I got a, a good opportunity to go ride with Stuart uh, down at his place in Haines City, mm-hmm. and that was really good. And then and, and then at the end of 2008, um, I, I got an opportunity to go up to to, to RC's place, and uh, and that was that was kind of cool because it was it was kind of when I came in 07, Ricky and Ivan were my teammates, so it's kind of like reunite with them and ride and. It was awesome. You know, we got a, the, me and Ivan were riding partners and we had a good training program and it was a fun time of my life. You know, I was talking to Ivan the other day. It's, it's a moment that I'll never forget with those guys. And just, <laughs> I bet <laughs> it, it, it just really, it just really sticks out. We had a great time. And then, and then Kenny, Kenny Watson comes walking through the door and, and then we, we sparked a good friendship, you know? So. Hey, do you remember, do you remember when I was there and I was like really overweight and I put Ricky's gear on? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was doing the fox shoot uh, and i came out and i'm like what do you guys think that was funny. yeah but yeah there was a lot of uh a lot of people don't realize you know what what really went on at that farm like especially you know towards the end there when you know ricky was gone and it was you and ivan and then you know when ivan went to honda and you were you know the guy on the suzuki and there was a lot of work, you know, people don't realize like, you know, your dad was your practice bike guy and I would be yep. there just trying to help out Ivan, you know, working on his bikes a little bit. And me and your dad spent a lot of time and late nights in that, in that barn, getting bikes yep. ready for the next day. And, you know, your dad was living down there with you and, you know, he, he pretty much just, you know, he has a business and he turned it away and, and gave it all up for your career. And, you know, he was telling me a bunch of things about, you know, what he had going on back home and what he's giving up and sacrificing because he believed in so much in you. And I was just like, man, that I just, and I'm not trying to say this to blow your dad because I respect your dad, but at that point in time, it really didn't sink in like the values you have as a parent and what you're going to do for your kid until I had a kid. And now I have a kid and I go, man, there's, you're willing to do any sacrifice for your kid if it's going to better them. And in, the thing that I always respected, there was a lot of guys in front of your dad that did the same thing, but they had their hand out. And they wanted, you know, they made their kids sign a contract. You know, you're going to yeah. give me money. You're going to do this. They didn't do out of the love, you know, of being a father to their son and wanted to be part of it. And I right. know that, you know, there was a lot. And, and I, I watched you pretty much grow up from the time you were 16 until you pretty much left there. And, you know, there was a lot of things that, you didn't even know about that, you know, Ricky and myself and Ivan would do. And all you could say is, dang, man, really, yeah. really? You know, Ricky pulling off his underwear and wrapping them around guys' heads when they're sitting there undressing and just all kinds of different stuff, you know. And I'm sure yeah. you have tons and tons of stories. But uh, that was a, you know, like you said, I think that was a pretty good, you know, time for you to see what it would, that there could be fun with it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> I, uh, and, and, and you, I mean, you hit it on the nail. I mean, my dad, if it weren't for my dad and the sacrifices and, or just the, the passion that he had for the sport and knew him to go to the races and, and he did it growing up as a kid, but I think he really had a good, <clears throat> he loved what he did, you know? And, and I think it was a, you know, he kind of lived through us cause he enjoyed it so much and um, he would have done anything and he did do everything. You know, it was, it was incredible to, I mean, for sure. Does every kid and parents have their rough, rough patches and, and, you know, you're 18 years old, you, you get a little bit of, you know, you get that attitude and, and, you know, you never, I'm always very fortunate to have the, that relationship with them, you know, and, and that, um, you know, I mean, geez, they went in debt to get me where I am today. And I'm glad I'm glad now, you know, everything's smooth and going good and they're solid and, and everything. And I told my dad the other day, as before we're going to the press conference to, to retire from racing, you know, and, and he just said, and, and it was what I was thinking. He just said, Could you imagine, I can't believe what it turned into. You know, we just wanted to, you know, make a living at this and go to the races and have fun. And dad would always kid with me, uh, you know, how cool would it be if, you know, we'll fly into the races and, and there we were, you know, flying to the races now. And, and it just, we, I think we were just both surprised what it turned into and just, you know, you know, and it, it was awesome. Yeah, you know? for sure. I mean, just, just been, you know, being there for your titles and being there, you know, 
on the bad days, you know, I was there when you broke your collarbone, you know, and I was yeah. there when you had many times at the test track where you're just throwing your hands up at the farm, just going, man, I can't find this. I can't find the settings. If it's testing tires or testing with Suzuki or testing with whoever you were just, I seen the frustration and I seen all the, the things that you had to overcome to become that champion. And a lot of people don't see that. They just think, Oh, he's a hard worker. He's the diesel. He's that a lot of people don't really know the real Ryan Dungey, you know, they, they see this guy that's on the Wheaties box. They see this guy, you know, riding around naked on a motorcycle. They, they just think he's his poster child, but I, you know, people know that it's hard work, but I don't think they really, really know, you know, like Ricky, for instance, people, when, when Ricky raced, I think he, when he dedicated his life to racing, um, he was a different guy than he is today. He, he was still kind of a smart ass away from, his business, but he could separate that. And I think you're the same type of guy, but you kind of kept in your box and, and didn't really, you know, I, when people talk to me about you, I say the best way I can describe it is like Jeff Stanton was when he raced, he was just stone, didn't care. He was just a hard worker. He didn't care about all the outside bullshit. He had his head down and he wanted to win after he raced, he opened up a little bit. And I think that's yeah. a lot of people are going to see that side of you in the future. Yeah. I mean, I just, I never, never, I never did my job wanting everybody else to think, Oh, that guy was gnarly. I just, I just tried to always do it with, with discipline. And I, if I'm going to do it, I want to do it right. And, and hard, you know, just be a hard worker, you know, my, like, like you were saying, that's my dad, he worked hard and he taught us a good work, work ethic. And, and I just, I hated, I don't, I didn't like commotion. I didn't like um, getting involved in other drama because it was just like, for me, it was like, for what? I, it's a waste of energy. I, I don't care. I always try to just stick to my, stick to my line and just, and just do it a hundred percent. And uh, shoot, did I had fun doing it? Yeah, I did. Was I maybe a little serious? Maybe, but I just wanted to do a good job. I wanted good results and, you know, you put in a lot of work and you want, you want to get the results too. So it just, just try to do it a hundred percent and right. And, and, but did I have fun outside of that too? Yeah. But it's funny, you know, our sport is so, you know, you race Saturday, you fly Sunday, you're practicing Monday, Tuesday. I mean, you take Wednesday off because you just need a little day to recoup and then you're back on the bike Thursday, you're flying Friday. So there's really, really not that downtime that a rider gets if, if you're doing it right is what I'm saying too. But so year after year and week after week, and then the months and then the years that yeah, there's very little downtime. So yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I, it's I, rem short. I remember a comment you made to me and it might've been over a couple of adult beverages when we were at Destin and we were having a really good time. We were with really good people and, we were having fun, and it wasn't like anybody was out of control except for Ricky trying to drive his boat up the dock that one time. But yeah. um, I remember you telling me one thing. We were standing on that Noriega beach, and Lindsay was there, and we were all just sitting on the beach, and you just we were me and you were chilling in the water, and you said, "Dude, I could get used to this." <laughs> and I'm, I just looked at you and I said, heck yeah, this is cool. This is how people live, you know. This is how the yeah. other – this is how, like, people that don't race and they come here every weekend and I don't know how they afford it, but this is what they do. And, you know, it's <laughs> – I am stoked that I could see, you know, your hard work and your, you know, dedication pay off. But, you know, getting back to your – your the your family and your the hard work and the you know I think it's a trickle down effect from your grandfather to your dad to your brothers I mean Blake he works his butt off your other brother works at KTM they're all hard workers and you know a lot of people don't know but you know Blake is killing it what he's doing I mean yeah I, I mean I re I remember he sent me a proposal to do some stuff the first time and it was he's just like eh, I just started and then you know he sent me some other stuff but uh, he's on it. You know, and that they're they're they just work their butts off. You know, they work their butts off, and I think that's whatever your plan is to do when you're done. I don't think that's going to change because you're not that guy just to sit home with your feet up. I don't think too many motocross racers are. Yeah. So. Yeah, I know. I mean, yeah, whatever whatever mom and dad did, I I'll have to get that strategy because yeah, and somebody yeah, we didn't get into 
We didn't get in all the bad stuff, but two racing. We, where were we every weekend? And the, when we were younger, we were racing, and it, and I think that kept us out of a lot of trouble and brought us closer as a family. So, yeah, it's just been incredible, and we're still close today. You know, I think a lot of times racing can tear families apart too, but we we always kept intact what was important, and and I think it's uh, yeah, nice think, that we're all. We're I think it was pretty today. humbling how you when you had to to separate, you know, when you said, you know, when you had to talk to your dad and he, I talked to your dad about it. Cause I was like, Troy, yeah. how are, how are you? You know? And he, he's, he's an awesome man. He said, tell you the truth, Kenny, I was hurt, but you know what? I, you have to let go of your kids at one time or another in life and let them go do wrong or right. And they're going to learn by themselves, but I'm still here for him on the weekends. I'm not here as anything, but his father. And you know and I'm not the guy, you know, if he wants to come ask me a question about anything, I'll, I'll give him the answer. But I'm not going to go in there and say, oh, this needs to be changed or that needs to be changed or you need to do this or that. And I asked him how that was going, you know, halfway through there. And he said, you know what, I enjoy this side a lot better because I can yeah. go home. I can do my job during the week. And, and I really think he enjoys doing what he does. I mean, he's a hard yeah. worker and, you know, saying that. And I, I remember talking to your dad uh I don't know, maybe in New York or one of those races. And uh, I'm all, how's everything going? And he's like, ah, you know, it was down to the wire, you know, what you you what you were doing. And, and uh, he said, he looked at me and he winked with this little toothpick in his mouth. And he said, <laughs> one way or another, it's all going to be all right. And he just winked at me and I knew what that wink meant. And I'm just like, yeah, I bet you, I bet you, you know, and I, you know, you did what you had to do and you walked away. A lot of people don't realize that you're not one of those guys that you just said it. You don't want everyone to say, oh, look at me, look at me. You're frugal. You don't go waste your money. You, you're, you, know, you're, you did what you had to do in the sport, and you, know, you walked away as an icon in the sport. I mean, I know that's kind of hard for you to realize, but I never thought, you know, I, I know for a fact that you never thought that someone would say Ryan Dungey is an icon. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I just – I tried – yeah – you know, I just try to be a good, a good. Uh, you know, like Ricky, I always thought when be when I started. You know, we're sitting there signing autographs, and he was so good to his fans and the people he met, and he and he and he, you know, a guy that you want to be around. And and I took, I re- noticed that right away, and it's like, man, I, I want to be like that. You know, I want to be good to the people, and I just, I tried my, and you can't please everybody, and and you get busy at times, but you try and. Um, but you know, you got this influence, and using it for something greater than than yourself is 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 important. And there's a lot of kids out there that, you know, you can be a good role model and a good example, and and they look up to you. And what you do, they're gonna do. So if you do bad stuff, then they're probably gonna want to be do bad stuff. So and you, you know, it's it's like you got to be careful and 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 you know be you know be that positive influence for the for the younger crowd too. Yeah, for sure. I mean. We could go back and, and say, you know, the po- the positive influ- the influences when you were going for a championship on the light spike and you had a guy that was bipolar different than you. Um, and there was a situation where, you know, he would jack with you and do these things. And he did end up winning the title. And right. so is that the kind of champion you want your kid looking up to the road that he's went down and has followed the footsteps going down? I mean, I, I wouldn't want my kid, but on the other end, like I know that guy and I know the way he is when he's not caught up in with all those people around him and egging him on to do stuff like that. He's a pretty nice kid, but you know, once you do these things and you think that you need to do this to be the cool guy, I think things can happen, and I think you handled that situation. Even though you did not win, you you took it on the chin like a champion. Yeah. No, that was that was uh, the toughest point in one of them, the toughest points of my career. But I, I looking back, it was one of the most learn um, crucial learning experience. Like I'm almost like I had to go through that because it really helped set the tone for for what was to come, and it it. it I hate this, you know, you, you learn in times like that. You don't learn when times are good and you're winning races and everything's, you know, everything's great and you never tested. Those are the moments that, and I didn't realize that at the time. And did he get the best of me? Yeah. But 
in the end, you know, I realized how crucial it was to, to moving forward, how much it was going to, I didn't realize how much it was going to benefit, um, you know, myself moving forward too. So <laughs> I don't know who, I don't know who, who, who is more angry, you or your dad. I could, yeah. I could. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah, there was, there was, there was a point Jade was upset. I was upset. Dad was upset. Mom was upset. It was, it was crazy. Well, <laughs> it was I, I, I talked to your dad. I remember coming out of the tunnel and he was ready to kill. He was mm-hmm. ready to kill. I want to think like he did was, did both of you guys ride a two fifty or a four fifty in Indianapolis? And he was just jacking with you the whole time in practice yeah, or was, something happened. Something, was, uh... And he was heated. I remember we were walking, th- we were walking out and he was like, oh, I'm going to kill that guy. And he was like, oh, wow. And your mom's running behind him. Troy, no. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. I, I did what I did what you're not supposed to do. I, I retaliated. <laughs> and uh, they well, got the best. You only Again. can you only can cold. You only can hang on there so so long. But uh, that's yeah. that's enough. Do you think do you think when you went through that? times that time that you just put all that in the memory bank and like that maybe help you at the end of this last championship that with with Eli that you were like you know mentally you're just like man I just got to keep going keep going keep going I know that you know like in your press conference you said that you were just mentally beat up and you just didn't have that mental drive no more but at the end do you think that whole scenario that happened with that other guy back in the day really helped you persevere to get to where you're at? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there, there's nuggets I took from that, that year, a lot, a lot of, a lot of pieces that I applied to the rest of my career. You know, I mean, I had a 35, I think a 30 something point lead. Um, and then, you know, I, I, I threw it all away and, and, you know, things like, um, taking it one race at a time and, and focusing on that day and living in the moment and, and, um, if I did have a points lead, I, I, even in the years to come, I would pretend that I was tied and I was even with the guys, you know, so I'd mentally kind of play games to kind of take the pressure off of myself, but, but apply it. And, um, yeah, it, it was huge. And, and, you know, I did, I, it, you, people can call it a failure, but it wasn't a failure. I learned it was my second year as a pro and, um, I came up a little short and I, we, we came up yeah, we lost it by a little bit. So I'm just glad that I, I, I didn't let it get me down and, and I didn't give up and quit. I'm glad that I kept pursuing. And then look, look what came, you know, like 2009 was a dream season for me. I mean, the, 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 the supercross motocross and the 250 class championship. And then we won the, the motocross of nations with Ivan. That was, that was just a, I was, it was incredible. And then here we go to the 450 class and, I mean, I just wanted some good results the first year. I was like, all right, I'll learn. But then we started winning races and we won the championship and motocross and supercross and then the designation. So it was just like, you know, with, with such a low you can be at. And I felt like I felt low. Like I just felt like like it wasn't worth much, you know, after 08 with with Lawrence and stuff like that and throwing it away. And then and then, you know, those learning experience really catapulted to something even better. And it was just a good you know, like a lot of the things in my life, ne- you never give up. You always keep going for it. And, and I didn't follow the crowd. You know, I stuck to my, stuck to my rut and I just kept giving it my best. And, and, uh, yep. it was around, around some good people and, and it, and just, yeah. So yeah, for sure. I learned a lot. Yeah. I think, uh, you, you said that quite well. I think, uh, you know, coming down to the end this year, you did what you had to do and it all worked out. That's awesome. Um, yeah. My next question, this might be a little touchy, and I think everyone's afraid to ask you, but since, you know, you could tell me to screw off if you want, but uh, everyone keeps saying, oh, that Roxon crashed mentally jacked him up in his head because he was on the gas before that. Then he's seen Kenny, you know, go down, and I'm like, yeah, but he didn't see Kenny crash. He's seen the aftermath, or did you see Kenny crash? Uh, just the, it was in the corner of my eye, but yeah, but anyway, go ahead. But that, 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 that crash. And then what happened to you before at the outdoor nationals, did that, when, when that crash happened and then you found out what was really wrong with you, did that make you take a step back and go, wow, it could be over so quick. And that really got the wheels turning in your head about, you know, maybe it's time in the near future to, uh, to call it. Um, it, it first of all, Kenny's crash 
it mentally because he got and I felt for the guy. I mean, I, I obviously what he's going through. You never want to see anybody of that going through. And second, Kenny's crash didn't mentally make me fearful. Like, oh my gosh, I gotta I gotta hang it up after this year. That I can't handle this anymore. That had nothing. It, if it mentally messed with me, it was the fact that I prepared to beat Kenny because obviously Kenny's a top competitor. He's going to be a guy to beat. And you prepare to beat a guy like that. And when a guy like that who who is there every single week and, and he's pushing you to get the most out of yourself, he, that's it motivates you in a way to want to be better and you got to come back stronger and fight harder. And so when Kenny got hurt and wasn't racing anymore, the mental side that messed with me was the fact that I didn't have that guy pressuring me anymore. But that was it wasn't good that he wasn't it. it how do I say it? it him pressuring me made me a better rider. And when he stopped, when he got hurt, he wasn't pressuring me anymore. And you're like, you, you need like guys like that who, who bring the best out of you. And then, then the other thing people were saying like, Oh, Ryan's got it easy now this year. And I knew dang well that this is just a test and somebody else is going to step up and, and sure enough, the next, the next week and here's Eli. And so on another note though, with the crash at, last year at Colorado, the neck injury sure did. Yeah. When we got the doctor's news and the report and what he said, I mean, I mean, I think any of us would, would take a second, uh, um, think twice about going back into racing the dirt bike again, but I took some time off and I knew dang well, I couldn't make a decision based on fear. And I thought to myself, if, if I'm going to do something, I got to do it a hundred percent and commit myself to it. And and have, do it with my heart, do it with all my heart. And, and, you know, me riding out there fearful of something happening, there's more chances of something happening, riding cautious like that. Cause you put yourself in bad situations. You're not focused. You're not on top of your game. And so the, none of those sin, in situations were the decision for me to retire. Um, the, the biggest thing was just, you know, there's, there's a, it's just a, a lot of years started to add up and it got to a point and I, I literally gave it all I had. And, and it's really hard for me to help somebody understand this unless you've been through it, but I gave it everything I had. And, and I just, you know, I felt like there was, there wasn't anything left and, and me putting myself out there. I, I was mentally foggy. I don't want to put myself out on that starting line because things happen too quick. You got to be focused and sharp and, and I wasn't, and, um, I gave it my all. We finished strong, thankfully, and, uh, in Supercross and, and now, you know, I'm, I'm okay with, I'm happy with my career and I'm thankful I'm healthy and safe and a lot of other things. And, um, and I'm ready. For, I, I'm, I'm, I'm content with what I did and, and I have nothing to prove to nobody, nor did I. And, um, I'm excited to move on and, and, and for the other things in my, in our life. And there's, there's a lot more things I, I look forward to and have hobbies and interests and, and as well as Lindsay. So that's awesome. Well, let's just leave it at that. Let's leave it at that with that one. And, uh, yep. <clears throat> my next question, you said it in, in what you were just talking about is about, you know, you gave it everything you had for so long. Um, mm-hmm. I've, I've been around Eldon. I've been around Ricky. I've been around Villapoto. I've been around Ken. And, you know, Ricky told me something, you know, when I was there, when he told me that, you know, what his deal was and he was going to retire, you know, and he had, you know, one more year and then he's going to do a half a season. And I'm like, why? You're why? You still got it. You're still dominating. And he goes, dude, I've been putting in this hard work for a long time. It's been 10 years and there's like a window. Your body can only do it for so long, physically yeah. and mentally. So, uh. <laughs> What he did, you know, he told me that it only, you know, there's like a 10-year window of, you know, at high-level training and mental fitness. And, uh, you know, Villapoto did it. He did it. Now you're doing it. Do you believe in that theory? Like, you know, just depleting yourself for that long, you can't really keep going and going and going. Um, I know you, you know, people want to win titles and win championships. Um, mm-hmm. But what's, what's your theory on that? Yeah, I mean that's it's and he he's right, you know. There's there's a lot of races that the races start to really stack up and there's the off season races too and the thing about riding a dirt bike it's very physical. It's mental, but it's also physical too and so 
you have to constantly keep ma- maintenance that, per- you know, you can't just not ride during the whole week and go race the next week. It doesn't work like that because you'll lose fitness and you won't be as strong. So you're constantly having to build yourself up 24 seven. And if you're not riding and training, you're resting and, and, and vice versa. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, mentally, it takes a lot of mental strength to be there every single weekend and, 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 you know, not letting your mind wander and, you know, and, and I didn't want to accept it. You know, not, I don't think anybody who's retired wanted to accept like, God, oh, I, you know, it's, it's, it's time, but it's like, I, I went as hard as, like I said, as long as I can. And, and mentally, it, it, you know, um, maybe if there was less races and more time off that, that the, the riders careers were long, be more longevity but you know i find it interesting too you know i'm i'm 27 ricky was 27 villapoto was 27 bingo um and it, and it's i talked to you know ricky johnson and, and david and um johnny o'mara and i mean anybody that had a a good run it was it was about a 10-year window and i don't know why i don't know why it gets to that point you know like I was telling you earlier through the whole week, you ride, you're training and there's no downtime. And, and I, um, I think you just get to a point where, like you said, we, we were on the beach and it, and it was nice, you know, we rarely get a weekend off to go do anything like that. And that's okay. I, I, I understood what I was getting into and, and what it took, but I also know it's very short. You got to make the most of it too. So that's what I tried to focus on doing. And I wanted to, I wanted to give it my best and have a career that was strong and, you know, and and I gave it everything I got with the best intensity I could and put it all out there every single time I went out and rode and raced versus I didn't want to do a 16, 17 year career, mediocre, just drag it out. I'm not, that's not me. And I can't, and not to mention, I can't handle seconds and thirds and four. I (laughs) I, I need to, you know, if I'm not winning, then, Oh yeah, I know it sounds. We I know mean, that. I I know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a competitive nature. So it's uh, I don't really know why, Kenny, but it's just mentally. I hate to say like, ah, oh, that's all I had, and 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 I never gave up. And this is not me giving up. It was just, it was just time. Time, and, yeah. And it my happens. body, my body and mind had had enough, and and um, and that's okay. You know, there's more important things of life than. You know, you could be the best racer in the world and have the best, most successful career and make the most money. And then you miss you miss what life's really all about, too. You know, and and there's more to life than racing. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't realize, you know, you've been doing this for 10 years. You did it as a kid. You really never had that that life where you could say, you know what, this weekend I'm going to go camping. You know, next weekend I'm going to go to the movies and I'm going to go on to take my wife out. I'm going to go on a vacation. You've never been able to do any of that kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I just want to tell you a funny story. Um, <laughs> when you were saying, you know, you miss a day's riding and it jacks you up. I'm going to tell you, because this guy is not human, and you know who I'm yeah. talking about. One, yeah. we, were, we were in Destin, and it was me, Ricky, and Ernie. And a couple other, uh, J.H. wasn't there. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the, the old bus driver, Boo. Boo yep. and just a couple of the other dudes. And uh, we went there on the weekend off, and we were there on a Monday, and Ricky goes, let's just stay one more day. Well, that one more day turned into a Thursday. Wednesday night, he goes, we get back to the condo, and he goes, I think I need to go home and ride at least one day before the race. <laughs> and... He did that, and he, you know, that's Ricky Carmichael. Like, he yeah. stayed down there. He didn't ride for literally eight days and went and rode one day. Uh, and you know what Jeannie was doing, flipping out yeah. on him, screaming at him, you know. And speaking of that, what about the family nights over there? Was that a good time or what? The way the Carmichaels oh, would just yeah. open. A lot of people don't realize, but, you know, the <laughs> Carmichaels, just not, they're just not like work, work, work. Every Tuesday night, right? Was it Tuesday? Yep, yep. Tuesday night, they would open their doors to anybody that was in town driving through and feed them dinner, and we would have, you know, story time, Ricky jacking with people, Big Rick playing poker. It was just a really, really good time. And, uh, you know, I think that's a lot of the times where, you know, 
I got to bond with you and your dad, and, uh, you know, it was a good time. It was a really good yeah. time. No, those family nights were incredible, and, yeah, Jeannie, she would cook up some good food, man, and, and Big Rick telling I'm, us some good jokes, and I, I look forward to I look forward to every Tuesday night in, in uh, Tallahassee, and it was, I still miss it, you know, they're, they're good people. The Carmichael's just overall good, good people. Was it, a, was it, like, a really, really hard decision for you to, I know when you went to Eldon and you, you know, you trained at the Carmichael's and they pretty much let you have run of the land and say, Hey, who do you want to ride here? Who do you want to ride here? You know, if you don't want him here, this is your spot, Ryan, you know, this is yours. And, you know, at the end there, you, you know, you took off and you went down there. Um, but you were around Eldon when he was with Ricky, you knew the work ethic, you knew what it took. And, uh, you know, going back to when you said the championship thing, Eldon's what I remember Eldon from day one saying you could put the work in now and win your titles and walk away and win a bunch of championships, or you could half-ass it and stick around for 15 years. What do you want to do? Yeah. And that right. was his standpoint. You know, that's what he, his, what, what's the word I'm looking for here? His objective of with you guys was to get you guys at the highest level as an athlete to compete at the highest level. And, you know, a lot of people want to say whatever they want about him, but it's proven. It's proven. You know, I know he's probably pretty upset over the Nikki thing, you know, Nikki Hayden, because yeah. Nikki was part of that program in Tallahassee. He, you know, he lived up there and trained with you guys. And, you know, that was just, yeah. that's just a total bummer. But uh, a lot of people don't know. He trained Nikki Hayden. He trained Ricky Carmichael. You know, he trained Brian Dungey. He trained James Stewart. You know, he he yeah. trained the, all the top guys and every guy that worked with him. And I know that you had the opportunity to go with him, you know, a couple times, and you didn't. And I remember yeah. talking to you when you first went there, and you told me, I go, how is it? And you straight told me, I feel like I'm not doing enough. But <laughs> he's the guy, because I remember when you would go to the farm, you would either ride your bicycle or go to the gym in the morning, come home, ride, and go jogging. Like you were all, yep. you were wide open from the sun time, from the time the sun came up until it went down. You were doing your thing, and when you went there, you had spare time, and you were like, "Wait a minute, what's this?" Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, Eldon's been incredible. Um, I did have a couple opportunities to work with him. I hate to even say that, but I met Ricky when I turned pro, and or not Ricky. I met Eldon when I turned pro. Um, he was working with Ricky, obviously. And I just like the guy, I knew he had something that nobody else had, you know, and just, just his presence was just like, I loved being around the guy, you know, he was just fun, you know, hang, hanging out. And, and, um, you knew, you knew he was, he was a good person, what he was about, but yeah, when, when you, I got an opportunity to wait and I kind of like, well, I, I, I was working with somebody else. So I, I passed on it. And then 2010 came around and, it was going into 2011. I had an opportunity and I really should have jumped on it and I didn't, but hey, life goes on. And, and then, um, you know, 2014, here we go again. I got another chance and I said, I'm, I'm going, I don't care how much, what it takes, whatever it takes. I'm there. And initially I was up in Tallahassee. He was down in Orlando. It's a four hour drive. And, and, and we, I decided, look, Elvin, I'll work with you, but I'm going to just do the long distance thing. Well, I got a chance to go down there to, to ride with him and the, and the other guys he worked with at the time. And then, and then just be one-on-one -on -one with him for a week. And I, and that, that, that's where it all changed. I said, just the being, just to be together and him being able to see me and maintenance. And, and if I'm tired, if I'm not how, and we can just have a better program. And it had nothing to do with, I didn't like up North or anything. Everybody was solid and, and was so good to me. It was just more of a matter of me, making a, a choice to try to, to better, um, my career. And that for me, I felt was with working with Eldon, but, but hands-on one-on-one living close to him. So I could see him every day and we could do our stuff together. And, and, uh, he had a facility down there that he started as well. So yeah, it was a big change. It was a big move, a lot, of, a lot to figure out, but. Was it hard on you when you left, like to tell Ricky and, or tell Jeannie and all them that you were, that you change your mind and you're not going to stay there? Yeah, I mean, with Ricky, it was, 
I, he he's understanding because he knows he knows how it is and he knows what it takes. So I it never never felt like I had to really explain it to Ricky. And he had, and I told him like, dude, he's such a good friend to me. And I all but I really had a hard time with Big Rick and Jeannie because I had grown like really close to them and they were so they took me in and they were so good to me, you know, and just like just like family. And so it was hard because it, you know, I feel like oh here I'm moving and they're gonna think oh. He doesn't like us or, or, or some weird reason, but, um, yeah, it had nothing to do with that. It was just me. I, I, this is where I had to go and Eldon's down South and, and I, I need to be with Eldon and that's the best thing for, for my racing career. So yeah, I think you did the right, and, I think you did the right decision, buddy. Uh, you yeah, know, and, I, and I think, you know, I was, you know, I, I kind of talked to, to them about it and, you know, the way Jeannie, you know, the sweet lady she is. Everyone calls her Meanie Genie. She's this. She has a beautiful heart, and she just said to me, "You know, Kenny, it was just like someone taking one of my own kids away from me. You know, yeah. It, and it it was just hard, but you know, we realized that it was what's best for Ryan. Uh, you know, now yeah. we do. At first, you know, you you act on your first response, and you're, uh, you know, they're upset and whatever. But right, you know, right. and it wasn't about money, property, or prestige. It was more about you know, them losing you, you know, being around. But I know yeah. the Carmichaels really care about you and your family and you know that. So like I can't oh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speak for them, but uh Yeah. You know what I'm no. gonna I'm gonna ask you one more question and then I'm gonna let you go. I wanna yeah. I wanna hear your thoughts on if you thought it was kind of funny, Kenny's um remarks that he would make and the little jabs that he would throw out on the podium about the diet. Um, last, oh. <laughs> last outdoors. And if you saw his outdoor t-shirt championship t-shirt. Yeah, I, I, I saw it. <laughs> no, I did. And Hey, look, it, it's for sure. Did it, was it like, dang, you know, like, why, why do you got to say stuff like that? But it was like, you know, I know Kenny, I know he's a good kid. Um, he really doesn't have no filter. He really doesn't. Right. <laughs> and that, and if you know, Kenny, you, you know, you, you get it. And it's really like, it's none to be taken offensive. It's just, it's just Kenny and he likes to eat good foods and mac and cheese and steak and good stuff like that. And I mean, the guy is super gifted and talented and it, and it sucks to be, you know, like I never, you know, what he, what he's going through right now, you know, it, it's very uh, hard to watch, you know, and especially for a guy who's so, you know, he's a likable guy, you know, he, he's that guy you need in a sport to, to keep the sport growing and to have him like out right now is, is hard. So, but I like Kenny, we, we, we've always had a good relationship. We have a lot of respect for each other. And I never took, I never took it personally, the stuff he ever said uh, yeah. last year. Um, it was more harder that he was winning and I wasn't. And, you know, as a racer, you want to win, but we still had a good respect for each other. And uh, he's, he's a good guy. So, um, and even today we, we text, we talk, we, we're, you know, we're, we're going to hang out a little bit here and there on the boat and stuff. So we have good plans. So I so, wish the best, you know? So a lot of people don't know though, when you moved to Claremont in, down in Orlando, you moved directly across the street from him, correct? Yeah. Yeah. That's we, I could take a, I could probably take a tennis ball and, and whip it from my front porch and hit his hit the front of his house so did you see him on sundays come home and with all his knucklehead friends drinking beers and <laughs> doing what he does <laughs> oh i mean i i yeah i mean we'd see each other run through the neighborhood and it was kind of cool because we could like see each other during the week and it's like we weren't even competitors we were just like hey what's going on man how's it going this and that and then and then we'd race each other on the weekends and then we you know yeah we could we could separate the two which i thought was good you yeah know? it was kind of kind of cool like i i went over and spent some time with kenny this weekend and just you know we we became pretty close last year in the in 15 and he was yeah. telling me i'm like you know where are you going to watch the race from he goes i don't think i'm going to watch the race i don't even <laughs> i don't even want to watch it He's like, yeah. dude, if I'm not out there and I know I should be winning, I don't want to watch th anybody else. Like, yeah. you know, I don't, I, I, I don't even want to be here. Like, I know I have to be here, and I, and I want to be here for my fans and, and my team and do everything I have to do. And matter of fact, he said the same thing in an interview, which I was kind of surprised about. But he did that, and he showed his whole arm and this and that. So, uh, but let, let me get your your take on this. What did you feel like when that first gate dropped for that? 450 race and you weren't on it 
you know, I think um, last year I went to Millville. Uh, I was obviously hurt, wasn't racing. And that, that was a little harder because, you know, you know, you should be out there um, and you're not because of an injury. It wasn't that it was your choice to sit out. It, it's uh, it was, you were forced to kind of sit out, which was, which was okay. You know, I moved forward, but this time in Hangtown, you know, I've come to peace with it. I've come to terms with myself that I'm, I'm happy with the decision. I, I was there this weekend. Am I going to miss it? Absolutely. There's a lot of things, but you know, I, I we went through it so many times and, and it, and it was a lot of fun and I'm, I'm ready to move on. I, I had a good time doing that, but I, I also enjoyed watching the guys and, and it's time for the other guys to do their thing and, and for me to watch. And, and I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm okay with that. And, um, you know, it's weird. You raced your whole life and now you're watching, but that's fine. I I did my thing. I had my career. I had my run and I'm okay. And I'm moving. We're moving on. All right. um, Microphone drop it then you're out. You're good. See ya. See ya. (laughs) All right, dude. Hey, Ryan, really appreciate you doing this. I really think that uh, a lot of people will enjoy this because they really get to kind of see the other side a little bit, you know, yeah. PG 13. Not <laughs> not all the stories came out, but you <laughs> yeah, know we got to keep some hush. Yeah, yeah, we will. But uh, yeah, wish you the best. Keep in touch. I will and uh, tell Troy, your mom. I said hi and uh, Lindsay and your brothers. All good, and uh, we'll see you this weekend. You got it, Kenny. I appreciate it, buddy. And uh, good good talking to you. And yeah, man. Hopefully we can hang out this weekend, huh? Yeah, guy. <laughs> Come on over. Don't don't rap on me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, dude. Talk to you later. See you, bud. Bye. Bye. Last but not least, I would like to thank all the people that make this happen for us. Thank you very much. I would like to thank Team Elite, Coco Paw Casino Resort, Ron's In Your Ear Audio, X Brand, Words Connection, Hart and Huntington Tattoo, Guts Racing, and last but not least, you, the people. Thank you very much for listening. Keep on keeping on. Talk to you soon. Cause I'm a bro